right? Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Advanced Miles and Points. Um, I'm Dave Grossman. I write the blog in communitymilestalk.com. And joining me is Spencer Howard, who writes his own Straight to the Points, has his award alerts, which maybe he'll tell about at the end because they're awesome, and writes for uh, the blog God Save the Points. These are some of the basics that we're going to talk about, but before we really start, I want to try and get a little bit of a handle for where you guys are all at. Um, if this was like a Miles and Points convention, I'd know a little bit more about you guys, but I don't know how many of you guys like excitedly booked this because you love Miles and Points, or just saw it and were like, that looks kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So could I just get a show of hands if you're pretty new and like you have a, maybe a credit card that earns points, but you're not you wouldn't consider yourself too savvy, raise your hands. Okay. <laughs> and if you would consider yourself sort of intermediate, you've booked some cool award trips. Okay. And people that are like, I use Expert Flyer, like, I don't even have you're to wondering about it. this talk and you think you're smarter than one, two, Yeah. If you want to just present instead of us, so one, yeah. two, three, four. Okay. So cool. Um, I think that's, that's a pretty good spot. Um, something that I would like to do, and we'll see if this works or not, because I didn't even tell Spencer I was going to do this, is as we go, if there's something that really doesn't make sense, um, just pretend it's school, raise your hand, and if it makes sense, we can try and take some questions as we go. Only because I think sometimes when you say them all to the end, you lose some of the context, but, you know, not too much. <laughs> Um, so, okay, we're going to start by just running through some of the basics. So even though it's advanced, we'll kind of, yes. Sorry, I have one question. Is this more for uh, US residents or is it for people? So who this know? part, that's a great question. So if this was more intro, uh, intro we'd be talking more about the credit cards and how the credit cards are the best way to earn the rewards and all that. And that tends to be US focused. But in this, we're actually really talking about how to redeem. And so that'll be good for everybody. Um, but that's a great question. It's very country specific on like what credit cards are available and how easy it is to earn like points and where they transfer. Because if you, the like, easy example is like the UK has Amex membership board points, so is the US, they have different transfer partners. So it just kind of depends where you are. Yeah. Um, but you'll, anything you learn here, you'll be able to easily translate from that. Um, okay, so to, to refresh on the earn side. So this, this seminar is going to be 90% how to spend but we'll refresh a little bit on, on the earning. Uh, I think the number one tool in the entire game is transferable. I call them transferable currencies. That's my thing, transferable points. Um, so we'll talk about what those are, how you earn them. We're gonna refresh you on the airline alliances, the three main alliances, and then also the ancillary partners outside of the alliances. We'll talk about when you're redeeming miles, how to use those alliances for both alliance bookings and partner bookings. And we'll touch a little bit on the transfer times uh, that it takes for the transferable currencies to get into the mileage program and what kind of effect that has on your attempted redemptions. Cool, so I'll jump in here. In, in the US, we have uh, five major transferable points programs. Um, four of them are banks, uh, American Express, Chase, City, and Capital One. Um, most are one-to-one -one transfers, like one point becomes one airline mile. Capital One is two Capital One miles becomes 1.5 airline miles, so a little different. Um, and then between City and American Express, you have the occasional partner that is not a one-to-one -one transfer. Um, and then we have Marriott, Bonvoy, and all of its problems that it's having recently. Um, but you can transfer Marriott points at a three-to-one ratio to a bunch of airline partners. Um, so that's the kind of quick overview. And then credit card is really kind of in the US like where you're gonna earn most of your points. Flying to earn miles just doesn't cut it these days in most cases since it's predominantly based on how much you're spending on the ticket and what your lead status is. So unless you travel regularly for work, it doesn't make much sense. Super so, old fashioned way to Yeah, do. super old fashioned. Yeah. Um, more modern here. Um, so yeah, credit cards are the tools of the trade. Um, I always like tell people don't be afraid like I know getting credit cards can be kind of a dicey thing for some people or at least they feel uncomfortable because it seems like they're gonna get in trouble um, and if you what's the guy's name who hates Ramsey Dave Ramsey like hates credit cards with a passion or something. yeah Dave Ramsey yeah. I got into a whole thing yeah. with him on Twitter he Dave blocked Fong. me yeah. so <laughs> true so story it's, it's locked me now the caveat is like if you can't like prevent yourself from spending 
just don't even bother with this game. Um, if like you see a credit line as an opportunity to spend more money, it's, it's not worth the interest fees and the debt. Um, so when you do start, assuming you're responsible, you know, a credit a card application is not really going to do that much to your credit score. I know everybody's always concerned about that, but it's usually just a few points at the beginning, and then within like three months, it recovers and a lot of. I mean, it will start to go up because. When you have more credit available to you, you seem like a better credit risk because banks are willing to give you credit, and it's just, it's a weird system. But <laughs> I, I notice on average, I notice on average uh, about seven points for, yeah. for an application. It could be three one time, ten another, um, and then within a few months, so you said it just comes right back. right back. Yeah, and then business cards are treated a little differently. Um, other than Capital One and Discover, they don't show up on your personal credit report, um, which if Again, in the U.S. with Chase, they have rules around like when you can get cards. Um, that can have a big impact on that. We won't dive too deep into that though today. Um, and then really at the end, just create a strategy that fits you. Um, there's many ways to travel, whether it's economy, business, first class, domestic, to the Caribbean, to the Maldives, to wherever. Figure out what it is that you want to do and then build your strategy for earning points around kind of what your kind of style of travel. Um, you don't have to do it the way you see maybe a blogger do it or your friends do it. Just like do what you want. Um, so that's a, I harp on that a lot. So. Okay, so this is where we're just gonna touch back on the airline alliances. Um, it shouldn't be hard for you to ever look this up, so it's certainly nothing that you need to um, memorize here, but uh, what you wanna do, especially if you do business travel or if you do a lot of flying, is you want to try and accrue on one airline and one alliance. So let's say, for example, you tend to go to Germany a lot. Well, Lufthansa is the national airline in Germany. Lufthansa is part of the Star Alliance. So therefore, you probably want to make your American home airline United, because United is also part of the Star Alliance, and you'll be able to accrue those miles for two purposes. One is you'll actually be able to earn enough for a redemption but you'll also hopefully be able to earn status. If you have a few international trips a year, you can probably bump up to United Silver status. When you get really advanced, you can start thinking about actually making a different program, an international program, your home program. I know some people that make Asiana a home program. Example. Um, and that's because they have some really great redemptions, and it's Asiana, for example, just because it's an advanced course, um, Asiana has some really great redemptions. The only way you can get miles into Asiana is the Asiana credit card or Marriott. And so since you have such limited options, it can make sense actually trying to crew that when you're flying on the Star Alliance. So the point is, figure out what's gonna make sense for you and try and stick to that. That doesn't mean um, to fly, you know, if you're trying to use Delta and you're in the Sky Team and you see uh, Air France is gonna work for you, but it's $2,000 for the flight and there's a flight on Lufthansa that's $800 then just book the $800 flight. So don't let that drive every decision. But if all things are equal, you want to try and consolidate it. And that's the big distinction between like the road warriors who are traveling every week. Like then, yeah, like you generally just stick. Yeah, if you're on Religiously race. to, yeah, if somebody's paying for your travel and you're like, yeah, take your alliance. Like my father flew Delta for like, I think it was like 2.8 million miles um, because that was work travel every week. But if you're not going to earn elite status and really like, mid to high, like top tier status. It's not really worth spending more money um, just so that you can say you have status that you won't get much use out of anyway. Yeah. Um, okay, and, and a really great tool to know about is a website, we're not affiliated with it, called wheretocredit.com. What you do is when you're, whenever you book a flight, you can go to where to credit, you type in the fare class. How, show of hands, how many people know what a fare class is? Awesome. So you put the fare class and the airline into where to credit, and it's going to tell you how much you can earn on various. So, for example, if you're doing a first class flight on British Airways and you type it into British Air, uh, into where to credit, it'll tell you that you'll earn 350% redeemable miles on Alaska. Alaska miles are actually really valuable. So that would be, you know, if I'm ever flying British Airways first, someone happened to buy me a ticket. Cool. Feel free. Let me know. Um, that's where I would credit. Now, when you're spending, so that's the the earning side. When you're spending, you're going to have a lot of factors to consider, and this is where you really kind of have to put in your, your analytical side because you don't want to waste opportunities. Um, you don't want to drive yourself nuts, but you do want to, I mean, I do because that's what I do, but you want to think about uh, four main factors. So one is just simple award availability. 
if you have miles and there is one airline that has that availability on the dates that you need, you're gonna use that. Um, product, if you are looking at first in, in business class and there's certain product that you wanna try, that might influence your decisions. You might be able to, you might be willing to pay more because you've been dying to fly Emirates first class and get the shower um, or Etihad first class. So for some people, this is all about aspirational travel. We'll touch later, but that's, I mean, that's definitely my thing. That's why I do this. Um, the routing, maybe you can get a nonstop versus having to connect on another routing. And then I think my absolute favorite thing in this hobby, which um, I call frequent flyer mile arbitrage, and that's where you use the miles in one point, to, um, the miles in one program to book a flight on another airline. And it is a well-known thing among the people that are deep in the woods on this, that it is almost never the best use of an airline's miles to fly on their own airplanes. So it's just, like that's a thing that's hilarious, but it's it's true. And so people, I'll give you an example: American Airlines. People bash American Airlines Advantage miles all the time um, because they make almost no saver awards available. Uh, they will try and force you onto awful connections to use your miles at low level. And so I will hear people in, in the group, for example, be like, "I hate American miles. You can never use them." And then I start rattling off the amazing ways to use them, like first class on Japan Airlines, first class on Qantas, um, business class in the Q Suites on Qatar. There's so many great ways, I mean, I, I run out of time talking about all the great ways to use miles, none of them are on American. And that applies to basically all of the airline programs. So specifically when I say arbitrage though, what I mean is um, how rate, and we'll, we'll get into this later with specific examples, but the rates to use one airline's program on the exact same flight will be different from another one. So if you have United Miles, or you have Avianca Miles, or you have Lufthansa Miles, they're all Star Alliance. They can all book the exact same flights, although sometimes Avianca is weird and doesn't show it. But they, in general, can all book the exact same flights, but they will charge different rates because the awards are based on their own award chart. So you might have one who's spending 70,000, one's 40,000, one's 55,000, and based on what you can transfer in, you wanna go for the best deal. Um, and just a reminder, because I would say, I mean, you guys aren't beginners for the most part, but one of the, the to us, funniest questions that beginners will ask is, can I transfer X miles to this other airline because they're in the same alliance? And so the answer is, with one exception, no, you can never do that. You cannot transfer Delta miles, say, to Air France, even though they're in the same alliance, but you can use Delta miles to book flights on Air France. So that's the big distinction. Uh, Avios can be transferred into Avios.com and out to the other uh, airlines that participate in Avios. So that's Avios is British Airways, Iberia, and Aer Lingus. So those are the, that's the exception yeah. there. Is this still me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the, the best value is almost always international business or first class. So show of hands, because I like doing this. I really like knowing where you guys are at so that we can guide where to go. Um, how many of you really love collecting the frequent flyer miles so that you can fly international first in business class? And how many just want to travel and you don't just coach as fine, just as many trips as you can? So okay. I told you they exist. Yeah, but slightly more of them are like me. <laughs> so in terms of absolute value, and you can debate this, but if you talk about how many cents in value you are getting for a mile, which is... I mean, it doesn't mean you would actually pay the full price for business class, but for example, when I redeemed 160,000 American miles, 160,000 American miles for a first class round trip on Japan Airlines, the cash price was $29,000. I would have never paid $29,000, I wouldn't have even paid $2,000, but it was an extreme good value, you know, 14 cents per mile. Um, so that's where you're always gonna get the best values, However, as we'll talk about later, it doesn't mean it's the only way to spend them, that's just how you get the, the most outside value. Always check the alliance and non-alliance partners, and that is to say that there are, um, I think a lot of people have really gotten the concept of alliances now, but as an example, American Airlines, at least for right now, partners with Etihad, they're not in the same One World Alliance, but they are still partners. So you always wanna look on the redemption page of whatever airline you're talking about and see what other partners they have. Etihad is not actually in an alliance, and they've got a dozen partners. More than that. More than that, that you can redeem on. And here, you might want to take a picture of this. Um, it's the right tool to search in each alliance. 
So if you're looking for a one world award, for example, you have American Airlines miles that you want to spend, British Airways and Qantas are the best sites in terms of inclusive award availability, meaning that if you're on the American website, it will not show you, for example, Cathay Pacific or Japan Airlines availability. These other sites will. And then if it's available, you can call American to book it with your American miles. For Sky Team, you want to use Air France, KLM, or the Delta site, or both. Uh, we'll talk later about how Delta doesn't often show you a lot of routings. Uh, and so sometimes you'll look on Air France and you see that available, and then you can try and suss it out on Delta. United or the uh, Aeroplan, which is Air Canada's website for the Star Alliance. And then to outliers, Singapore and Etihad, you have to create accounts on those sites and search there. Specifically, Singapore Airlines with like business and first class awards. They don't, very few flights will they release um, space to partners. So you almost always have to book it. Uh, Luckily, the transferable airlines. currencies will yeah, transfer to Singapore. Yeah. Um, Just a real quick touch on this, like transfer times, you want to kind of keep that in mind since some transfers aren't instant from the bank to the airline. And there are a lot of airlines that won't hold award space for you. So if it takes four days for it to transfer and somebody else books it while you're waiting, tough. Like that's just how it goes. Um, so sometimes it might make more sense to use more miles uh, if you know that that transfer will be instant. A good example is like Aeroplan, as we were talking about briefly, is Star Alliance, so is ANA. ANA often have better rates, but it can take two, three days for the transfer to process while Aeroplan is instant. So if you like, I need this flight, I need to make sure I'm traveling on this date, like Aeroplan, it's like it's an upcharge on the miles, miles, total miles used, but make sure you get the flight. So kind of have to weigh those, weigh those options. So. All right, so we'll get into like the real stuff now. Um, we'll touch on like, again, where to search for awards, uh, talk about surcharges, um, as Dave put it, uh, frequent miler or frequent flyer mile arbitrage. We'll talk about using bank portals versus uh, booking awards, especially for economy flights. Um, and then we'll talk about a couple of tools that we use to search. All right, so Dave touched on this a bit. Um, British Airways and Qantas are generally kind of the go to's for One World Award Space. Um, British Airways doesn't provide a calendar search option, so you kind of have to go day by day to see if there's space, but it's generally accurate, um, except occasionally on American Airlines when they show space that's not really there. And then they've also had situations where they just stop showing space that actually is there. So it's, it's, uh, it's still the best option, I think, unless you want to get a calendar search um, option then go to Qantas. Um, the hard part with Qantas is that if you're flying on a route that like Emirates flies, that's not a one world partner, but it's an individual partner with Qantas, and it might show in the calendar that there is space on that date, so you go to that date and then you see Emirates and you know you can't use American miles on Emirates. So that's just, you know, there's little, I don't know, quirks with each program, but I generally think they're the best. Um, American, however, is improving. It's starting to add more One World Partners, and I actually think it's a really good site um, if the partner will show. So like Cathay Pacific won't show on American site, but they've, in the last, I don't know, like eight months or something, added like Qatar Airways, Qatar. so now you can make it do your search there, yeah, and it's really easy. I'll let you do your Sky Team thing since you know all Delta. <laughs> well, that's uh, just one thing, but sure. Um, so for for this, it's a little bit confusing. So I like to initially search on Delta, and then I like to double check things on Air France. Uh, a lot of times, Air France will then show me some sort of routing that I hadn't considered. Um, there are there are things that you have to know. Um, you might have to Google or like come ask someone if it's if it's going to be a valid routing. Um, the Air France website and the the app sometimes don't show the same things. So it's worth checking both. I have no idea why it does that. Sometimes also the website won't show anything at all, and the app will. Yeah, especially. So I was just talking. Actually, Ivan's over here. We were talking about this on Twitter. The other day with a few people, like domestic Delta award space is just like not showing up when you search on Air France. As I found out, it's only if you search in the calendar view. So if you're trying to see all the dates of availability, it won't work. If you search a specific date, it will. So again, there's always a quirk. Yeah, you just don't know it. Until, the only reason anyone ever figures this out is because you're weird like us and spend like four hours in a day just like searching for things because why not? Um, yeah. So. And we all share what we just I found mean, out. We, we all have hobbies. <laughs> you read books, watch TV, I search for awards. That's right. 
Um, so, okay, in, in, in terms of delta, so delta, um, I'm gonna try and not get in trouble here. I find delta very frustrating <laughs> because there are tons of valid awards that are even valid in their own routing rules that they won't show you online. Um, I think it's nefarious, but it could be their IT. Um, so, so sure, sometimes they'll show space that isn't there. Um, I have learned in great detail that when you are booking a connecting flight in Asia on a partner airline, it will not show you unless you search directly. So for an example, if you wanted to go to Singapore from New York, um, and there was space on China Eastern connecting in Shanghai all the way through, it won't actually show you that. But if you search New York to Shanghai and Shanghai to Singapore, and you actually see a business class award available for each one, then that's actually a valid award to book at the low level, which right now, unless it's changed since yesterday, is 85,000 miles for a business class seat. Occasionally now, you'll find it at 78. <laughs> but, but it will, pri Air, it will price at 85. Yeah. So if you find, so, and I'm just gonna tell you this exists, but you might wind up wanting to kill yourself booking it, is that you can call them and say, you know, I see the space from New York to Shanghai, it's a valid connection, it has to be under 24 hours, I see the connection on to Singapore, I'd like to book the flight. In theory, they can do it. Um, if they just say, I don't see that available, there's a magic phrase to utter. You would say, are you using direct access? This is really the advanced part of this <laughs> workshop. Um, so the, Delta has two things. One, the, their agents use something called shopping. Shopping is exactly what you see on the website. So when you call in and they think they're being super helpful, they're actually just searching the exact same thing you did. So if they don't know how to use direct access, you would need to ask for a supervisor who should be trained in using that. That's their old system, which will actually, they can ping the partners directly. Then if everybody is fully competent, you may be able to book it at the correct mileage and the correct surcharges. I did recently spend two and a half hours getting this done um, because everyone kept coming back with wrong information and I corrected them and we got it booked, but it was excruciatingly difficult. So that might require a call. And just one little Easter egg, sometimes it, so Delta, an, an anomaly of the Delta program compared to United and um, American is they, they don't allow you to book any partner first class, which is one of the reasons I don't love Sky Miles. And that's, that's a Sky Team thing. It's a Sky Team thing, yeah. None of them allow you to book the first class. Delta doesn't actually have a first class product, but their partners do, but you can't use the Delta Miles to book them. Korean? Uh, Korean has first class, but you can't book. You, not with Delta Miles. Yeah, you can book with three uh, miles. I'm saying you can't book, you can't use Delta miles to book first in business. Um, but there is one interesting little anomaly. It's like kind of an Easter egg. If you've got a boatload of um, Delta miles, is that if there is first class partner availability on China Eastern and, and they don't have business class availability, the system will sometimes show first class. You will pay twice as much for it, but if you've got a million sky miles, that's a nice way to go. I'll give it back to you. Cool. Yeah. Um, so Star Alliance, I like to start with United because they have a very useful calendar search option. Um, and if you select to do that, you'll actually see two months worth of space. You won't see like the exact flights for each one. You have to select the date, but you will, I think they use like dotted lines on the like little, the date box for each date if there's like premium cabin award space and there's like a, a solid line if it's economy space. Um, so if you're looking for business or first class, you see the dots on one of the dates, you can go, you just click that and it'll display it below. If you don't like the flights there, you look for another date, you can click it. So it's just, it's an easy way to kind of get an idea of what Starline space is out there. Um, problem is that you don't get all your route, like routing options. Um, so basically what United gives you as a search result is what they will allow you to book. Um, and that can be problematic if they're just not showing you <coughs> an option that's really there. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, it has in the past struggled showing award space that's not actually bookable. Um, so I always recommend if you're booking with United Miles, like click all the way through right before the booking, before you start transferring miles because you don't want to transfer miles and then find out you can't actually book what you wanted. Um, and then recently they've been not showing some partners. Um, I don't think they're, I think they're still not showing Singapore Airlines economy space, but they have fixed Thai Airways and TAP. Um, so Aeroplane is another one. It doesn't have the calendar search option, but I've found fewer issues with phantom space. Um, and you can piece together awards, and this goes back to routing options. So 
if I wanted to fly, I mean, you used to be able to this United, you could fly from like DC to Germ like Frankfurt, Germany on Lufthansa and connect and continue on to Tokyo, all on Lufthansa. Now if United doesn't show it, you can't book it. However, if there's partner award space on each of those segments and you call or, or you search with Aeroplan, you can book it, or if they don't show it on your search, you can search each segment individually and then just call Aeroplan and tell them which flights you want and they can kind of put it together for you. Um, that that's I think they're pretty pretty good about helping you on the phone. I've had good experience with them. Um, I've done it a few times, um, but it's it's really helpful if you can't seem to get the routing you want that you know United just refuses to give you. And again, like you won't be able to book it with United Miles, but if you have Aeroplan, you will be able to. So. And then we have Singapore Airlines. We touched on this. Like Singapore Airlines doesn't allow you to book. Uh, doesn't allow partners to book first in business class space. There are the occasional business class route that will um, be bookable, and as I found, it's only on the A350 or one of their like regional flights. Um, other than that, it needs to be booked with Singapore's own Chris Flyer Miles. Um, they do now provide a flexible uh, search option, which gives you, I think it's a week of space, and it'll indicate like if there's saver space or advantage. Advantage is just like more miles. We are, we're shooting for saver level. Um, yeah, so that's a good one. And then Etihad, if you want to book, even with partners, you need to search for award space on Etihad site. Don't worry about what the mileage cost is. You're just looking for guest saver. Um, and that's what will be available to partners. Um, booking with American gets kind of wonky because you need to call like Austra the Australian or New Zealand or whatever call center abroad to get it booked. Um, well to hold the award, and then you have to call the US office because the New Zealand and Australian office won't be able to take your credit card payment. So, you know, again, things you just find out. Show of hands, how many people have booked an Etihad award using American Miles? One. Okay, it's a really cool way to do it, yeah. um, to use the miles. So you yeah. get a whole apartment to yourself. It's pretty insane, shower on board. So I'll let Dave kind of go through his process for uh, finding a workspace. Yeah, so, okay, so I'm, like on the Miles Talk group all the time, people are asking, um, you know, I have all of these miles and I wanna go here and I don't know what to do. So, put together just sort of what my own process is whenever I wanna go somewhere, um, and it starts with Google Flights. Now this is optional, but for me it gives me some clarity very easily on who flies the route. Um, and of course, you're not always going to go nonstop, but that's going to be the best way. That's your preference. So that's where I want to start. So let's say I want to go from New York to Frankfurt, um, and I'll pull it up on Google Flights. I don't care what the prices are because I'm not planning to pay for it, but I just want to know who flies that and from where. So here I easily see um, that my options are going to be Lufthansa, um, United, or Delta. Next slide. <laughs> you want to hear it? So a word hacker becomes your next best friend. And unfortunately, it is starting to get out of date, um, but it's still a great tool. You can see just from the fact that they show SPG, which doesn't exist anymore, that's now part of Marriott. Um, and so the ratios are gonna be wrong for SPG anyway. But this shows me what my options are to go from JFK or Newark to Frankfurt nonstop. Of course, I could expand that to have a stop if I'm not having any luck later. But right now I see that on Asiana, I could actually go for 40,000 miles. Now, the only place I can get those miles from are Marriott, so that might not be my first choice. I so some people do collect Marriott just to transfer to airlines. I have to think they're fantastic for using at Marriott. So I don't really like to burn my Marriott points on flights. So for me, I would get down to here and say, okay, Aeroplan, 55,000, that's probably a good place to look. I can transfer, MR means membership rewards. I can transfer my American Express membership rewards there. If that doesn't work, I can look at this option from United. That's only gonna be, and you just kind of have to know this, the 60K is only gonna be if it's on their own United metal. It says it there too. Does it? Yeah, but the oh, UA. Oh yeah, here, operated by UA. Um, if you're using UA miles to book a partner, it's gonna be 70,000 to Europe. And then the first one that you get to that basically you can take all of your points is gonna be Air France. Um, Those but that's not gonna be the right amount anymore because it's now variable on Air France. Air France now has kind of, it's basically point to point 
um, award rates. So if you they actually have a tool on their site, like a mile price estimator, you can enter in your origin and destination, and it will show you each class of service and how many miles are required. It just varies quite a bit. Um, you. And, it could be and, it's, and, it, and it's different for partners. So what you see there will not be what they would charge if you're flying Delta. Um, but they, I'm trying to think of a, an easy example. A lot of like flights out of the US in business class are roughly the same cost going to individual cities. So if I'm like flying out of Chicago or New York or DC or Atlanta and I'm going to like, I think Munich, Budapest, London, Dublin, Prague, it's like 53,000 miles in business. There's some other city, I think like Rome and Milan might be there too. But then if you're flying to, out of any of those same cities, which are flying to Paris or to Amsterdam, it'll end up being like 72 or something. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not the easiest program now, so I don't trust these rates. <laughs> yeah, at all. And the number one thing to know about Award Hacker is that even though it's super cool for letting you know what your options are, it does not show you availability. And I'm sure most of you realize that that is the hardest part of this entire game because they, especially for first in business, they really only make seats available for awards that they don't expect to sell and that is a very small percentage. So the fact that it doesn't show you that, it's just a starting point. <laughs> so now that, I, now that I know what my options are, I want to actually see what's available. And so I will use a calendar search on United to see um, you can you can sort it to business first. You can also, if you only want to go nonstop, or if you at least want that to be your starting point, you can select nonstop only. So this reflects a nonstop only calendar, and we see one day that has a flight on United's own metal, and we see three days that are available on a partner. Um, so that gives you an idea how just because we got that nice award hacker chart showing us our options. We've actually, using United Miles, or using Star Alliance Miles, we've only got, sorry, it's four. We've only got four possible days to use partners in one possible day. So out of 30, five days are possible to book. This is what it will actually look like when you continue on. So um, we could book on Lufthansa, we could book either the Saver Award in, in economy or in um, business. You also, you only get Saver Awards for partners. Um, yeah. So you see the business every day. This is it's only with on, United. If it doesn't say operated by, it's an, that's a United flight. Yeah. And well, they'll still give the, the every day. Yeah, they still give, which is just you can cancel. <laughs> it. Which is just funny, <laughs> right? Because you can cancel for a hundred yeah. uh, for another eighty-five thousand miles. So in this case, um, going back, we know that Aeroplan, Asiana, Avianca, Lufthansa. Does this not, by the way, show Avianca? I don't. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> My eyes were glazing over. Um, Lufthansa and United are all options to book that business class award. Of course, there are more options. They're just going to cost more than all of those. So back to something that we started in the beginning with, which is how do you choose and how are you going to go? So availability is your number one driver. You need something to be available or you don't have any option. There's no step two. Um, and that's where you might wind up using a portal. We'll get to that later. Um, so consider surcharges. And this is one of those advanced level things that becomes so important to know to maximize both what you spend in miles and also what you spend in cash. There are certain um, programs that levy huge surcharges on awards, like British Airways, and there are certain ones that do not. So for example, in Star Alliance, United and Avianca do not levy the surcharges. So if you're trying to fly on, for example, Lufthansa First Class, which can have surcharges ranging from about 350 to about $600. Uh, oh, one way, probably. one way, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, that you would pay that if you are um, using, say, Aeroplan, who does not block the surcharges. United and Avianca will not pass on the surcharges. So like a first class flight to Europe on Lufthansa would be 110,000 United miles, but 86,000. 87,000 Avianca miles. Um, <laughs> both United and Avianca won't levy any surcharges. So in some cases, especially if you're rich in that currency um, of mileage, you might want to use more miles and save the huge surcharge. <coughs> so summary, mileage price isn't everything. Um, this is only talking about Star Alliance in this grid. United and Avianca won't levy the surcharges. 
Um, so these are your options, um, the best options, Aeroplan, United, Avianca, they're all somewhat similar in mileage, somewhat similar in uh, price, except for Aeroplan, because they don't block the surcharge, so you're gonna pay an extra $520 or so. With Avianca, if you're wondering, so 55, 60 with United, that is the, like the base level taxes and fees that are not imp like, imposed by the airline, That's you're gonna get that on any ticket. Avianca has a partner booking fee of like 25, 25 bucks, which is what you see. Like yeah, per ticket. Yep. Okay. Um, and by the way, the, the new Avianca website, for those of you that have ever used Avianca, they just redid it. Took them a long time to do it. They shut the website down for five days while they rolled it out. And it still doesn't work very well. It will not tell you about that fee all the way through. And when you go to enter your credit card, suddenly, if it's for two people, for instance, it's $50 more. And you don't actually know why, so now you all know why. However, Avianca has a tendency to like misprice their own awards. So I booked a flight between Bangkok and Seoul that was supposed to be 35,000 miles, but for some reason it was listed at 27. So fine with me. Like, Take the Easter eggs. Yeah. <laughs> um, and again, always consider your transfer time. So it's just one of those things where it's sort of a game of chess. You might be able to spend 20,000 less miles, but that the mile, the points that you have in that program, it could take seven to 10 days to transfer the miles Maryland. and they won't hold the space and it's probably gonna be gone by the time, especially in a business class or a first class of work, it's probably gonna be gone. So there becomes sort of a game depending on how many miles and points you have. And if you're stalking one particular award, you might do a speculative transfer, but the risk is that the program devalues, you never <laughs> use that and they expire, depending on what program it is. The other thing so, I would just real quickly add is flexibility with your travel dates, Maybe that's, a huge driver of this like if you're just like i have to travel on this date well i mean good luck like if the award space opens it does if it doesn't you've got to buy the ticket the more flexible you are with when you travel the the easier it is to feel comfortable transferring some points that might take a couple days to transfer or like a few days to transfer because you're like well if i don't get this date there's this other date and i'm like i'll just push the trip a month like it's just that sorry there's, there's one good thing about Avianca. if you are using your own mileage in Avianca and then you're redeeming, you can pay extra and keep the status and, and then more miles. So it's like you're not paying like $50 more, but then those miles come in view with your status as well. That's what you mean. Interesting, I haven't looked at it because I don't really do much with stats. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, don't <laughs> I, don't, I don't fly on Avianca. I just yeah. use the program to book other yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so yeah, so you definitely want to consider those transfer times, um, big time. I do maintain a list on Miles Talk um, that's all of the program's transfer time, so that can be a good resource. You can always just Google also. It's a rough guide. Like It's a rough guide. <laughs> there are definitely times where things go wrong and it takes seven days when it should have taken no days, so. Yeah, yeah, the, the most frustrating thing in the world is when you, something should be under 24 hours and then you transfer it and then the points don't arrive and then your flight is gone and they won't transfer them back. I mean, I've actually seen them transfer Sometimes. back, but it's it hard. Yeah, I saw AMA did it for a friend of mine once, but don't rely on that because they'll probably say that. Yeah, once you've transferred the points, they're, just think of them as gone. Like, yeah. they're, they're with the airline now. Yep, so this is my favorite part. <laughs> We've kind of uh, worked up to this, talking about transfer partners, frequent fly mile arbitrage, all that. Sweet spot redemptions, um, this is when there's like, either you just have to know that it's a great way to get a certain experience, um, or it's a routing rule, et cetera. So I'll do the first one, uh, Etihad miles, which you can get through city thank you points or through uh, American Express, Capital, Capital One also. Um, you can, if you need to get to Casablanca, for example, you can go on Royal Air Maroc, and you can use those Etihad miles, and it's only 44,000 Etihad guest miles each way, which is fairly cheap as far as uh, flights that far go. So you just have to know that that's, I mean, you could study Etihad's website and you'd find it eventually. I've done that. But it's one of those things that, that you just kind of have to know. Um, there are some surcharges on it, but only about $300 a ticket. Yeah. So and actually, actually, if you book a round trip, go back. If you book a round trip, the surcharge is only, I think, there are like 420 or something, so it's actually, um, a really good deal that way. I will also well, add that- Get an account. Yeah, um, I will also add that um, with, so Etihad has a distance-based award chart with Royal Air Maroc, so the, the distance flown determines how many uh, miles it costs. However, 44,000 is the most you'll pay for a one-way, so you can actually book from like, this is New York to uh, Casablanca, but you could 
continue on. You can't do a stopover, so you've got to get that connection within 24 hours, but you could continue on to like Doha. Um, so your flight to Casablanca would be on like a 787 Dreamliner and your flight to Doha would be, and it'd be 44,000 miles to get to the Middle East. Or you could connect to any of the countries they fly to in Africa, or it's actually, I think, a great back doorway into Europe if you can't find space on one of the European carriers. So you could connect up to, I think they fly into like Munich and Rome and other places like that. So that's, a, I just think it's, it's becoming more popular, I feel like. People are starting to talk about it, but it's like it's a good way, it's a good way, yeah, and especially out in New York, there's great availability yep. um, in economy and business. So it's a great way to kind of find your way to other places for very few miles. Yep, to check availability, you'll have to create an account on the Royal Enterprise oh, website. Oh, yeah, you, can, so you can do that or you can just call it. You have to call to book awards with Etihad, yeah. so you can either create the, like, is it Safar? I don't yeah. know, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, either look online or just call up Etihad and ask them to look for space. Yep, and for those of you that are used to calling up obscure airlines for partner awards, uh, Etihad's call center is surprisingly awesome. I believe they're in Serbia. They moved to Serbia. Uh, and they are, they're really, they want to help you. It's, it's actually a pleasure whenever I call yeah. them. Like um, the so Lufthansa First Class, very tough award to get. Um, if you're booking with partner miles, you can't book until you're within 14 days of departure. Um, they don't release award space. And even recently, it's been less than 14 days. You have to be even closer to departure <laughs> in a lot of cases. Um, if you're trying to fly from the West Coast, it gets really tough. Um, so you can book with Avianca Life Miles, it's 87,000 miles for a one-way, there are no surcharges. Um, you can transfer, you know, Amex, City, Capital One uh, points, even Marriott. Um, again, the no surcharges is big when they could be $600, so that's nice. I will add that you can actually get it for less than 87,000 miles if you include a connection within Europe um, and like economy or business. Um, the problem, like that we were talking about, Avianca just has some weird things with its search. Sometimes space just doesn't show, and they won't be able to see it if you call. And it's just, you know, it, it's a bit of a. It's and a bit also, of a sometimes the booking just fails, and they yeah. don't know why. Hopefully, the new site will fix that. No, part, but I don't. No, it hasn't. Yeah, see. And um, sometimes it will fail, and then they you call in, and then they say, "Okay, uh, it's on hold, but we're going to have our one person in Avianca that can take a credit card and call you, and then don't miss that call." Um, it's <laughs> crazy, but it's, it's a really, again, this is, when it's things not, go wrong. The, part of the reason why there's like opportunities like this is because not everyone's willing to do it. So if you're willing to put in a little effort and maybe some blood, sweat, and tears, um, that's this entire hobby. Like, yeah. I mean, as another example, Asia Miles is Cathay Pacific's, uh, program. Their whole time can be horrific to the point that I remember calling them. I, I called them, put my phone on my desk, took a shower got back out, made lunch, ate lunch, started watching a TV show, and got a call, or like got off a hold. So, just, again, you gotta want it. <laughs> so, you're but it's fun, I promise. <laughs> Everyone should be doing this. Now. It is really fun. I mean, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't fun. Um, so this is, this is probably my favorite award that I've never booked yet. <laughs> um, I, I do have a, connecting 21 hour routing on Qatar coming up very soon, which I'm super excited about, um, from Singapore to Doha and Doha to New York. But this award is one of those things. So American Airlines has some, some uh, interesting routing rules where you cannot transit another zone. So if you're flying, let's say to Asia, you can't go through Europe because it's a whole different zone. Um, so in this case, if I wanna to go to Africa, Africa is of course a different zone but for reasons that nobody knows, it is an allowable rule within the advantage system to transit the Middle East only on Qatar in to Africa, in Doha, has to be in Doha, and it's one award. And they have their Q Suites product, which is what they call first in business. It's a beautiful business class. It's like first class, not quite, because your seat's not as giant as but um, You can do that all the way to Africa for 75,000 miles one way. Uh, so, for some reason, that's a super sweet spot. If you're ever trying to go to Africa, most people would not think to do that through Doha. It's actually only about four hours um, on the connection from Doha, depending on where you're going. But yeah. um, and I'll, so I'll, it's a really good way to go. With the routing rules with American, there are tons of them. I actually have a, what, uh, an article. Yeah, this goes, isn't the only one. <laughs> so I have an article on God Save the Points called like How to Redeem American Miles or something like that, and it has every single routing rule based on where your starting point is. Cool. If you need any information on that, see what you're allowed to do. So. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and that's the thing, it's, 
with this hobby, as deep in the woods as you want to go is how much you'll get out of it. If you want to spend, I mean, when I first, I've been doing this since, I don't know, 2003 or so, and at the time, the big resource was Flyer Talk, and I would sit and I would read threads on Flyer Talk that were 500 pages long, and I would read every single post and every single comment, complete obsession, but that's how I started to learn all of these little obscure things. For me, the reinforcement was actually taking the trips. When I actually go and fly first class somewhere and stay in some five-star hotel and not pay for almost any of it, then I just wanted to keep doing it and eventually wound up here. Now, okay, I'm gonna pass this over to Spencer. He's gonna do a real deep dive on a very advanced tool. That you need. Um, anybody use expert flyer? How many do they have? So not most of you. Okay. Um, Expert Flyer, I don't know how they pulled all this information together, honestly, I've never looked into it. But you can cert, I mean, you can do all kinds of things from like looking for specific fare class availability to obviously what we're gonna talk about is like award space. You can find out minimum connection times, which is like the allowed, like the minimum amount of time an airline is allowed to give you between your connecting flights, depending on if you're flying like domestic to domestic or international to domestic or domestic to international. I mean, it's just- So you won't miss a connection. It's insane what this thing can do. So we're just gonna talk about the award side of things. So it's, I, I basically say it's used by the obsessed. Um, but for award travel, you can just like search for like partner level award space. You can find um, maximum permitted mileage restrictions. We'll go into each of these in more detail. You can look at seat maps. You can set an award alert for specific dates on a particular, like a particular flight. Um, you can set a seat alert if you see that it's occupied, and that's they do have pretty good accuracy with um, if seats are occupied or available to be booked. But you can set an alert if it opens up, and you can set an alert um, just if there's like an aircraft swap or maybe they have a Dreamliner on it and they move it to an A330, which changes the seat map, and you want to make sure you get the seat you want. It's especially if you're like traveling with somebody. There's any number of airlines that have like two business class seats that are right next to each other and then they have in the middle section and then they have like the next row will be two but they're separate with like big dividers between it. So maybe you wanna sit next to like your spouse or something. So. All right, so this is I actually, awards and upgrades up there. That's why you, you'll, you'll see a menu when you get onto the homepage. You just click that and you'll get to here. Um, you just, I mean, this is pretty much just like running any kind of search. You've got departing airport, arriving airport, um, departure date, you can see it says exact date over there. You can change that to I think plus or minus three, which gives you a week. Um, you do need to select an airline, and then whether or not you want a connection, um, if you want to exclude code shares, if you're, if you're trying to like really just be on this one particular airline, um, it's a handy little tool. Um, oh, I guess I could have just showed you this slide instead of telling you all about it. Um, but yeah, you'll, in, some, in some cases you'll need to tell them the number of people. Um, and it just depends on which airline you're choosing to search on. And yes, you do have to specify an airline. So unlike with United, which will show you all its partners, you need to actually select like Swiss or Lufthansa or Austrian, all United partners, but you have to search each one individually. So it's a little more effort. Um, yeah. So the results look like this. This is actually an example of searching. So I don't know if you can see this up here. It says departing y YUL, that's Montreal. Um, on, 11, on November 13th, 2019, I've got plus or minus three days going to Zurich and flying on Swiss Air, which is LX. And then the quantity is two. So that's an example where you have to select the number um, of people that you're looking for. And then I chose direct slash nonstop only because I only want to find that specific Swiss Air flight that runs between the two, uh, two cities. On the seats column, on the far side for me, you can see there's three flights that I've shown as, a, as an example. You can see yes, no, and yes. So because I've specified the number of seats, we know obviously we know the first and the third option work and the second one doesn't. Now this one could still have one seat, but I've searched for two, so it's only telling me that it doesn't have two seats. If you don't have to choose the number of people in your search, under seats, it will actually show you a number of uh, seats that is available. Um, so like, what's a good one? Um, oh, LL, the Israeli airline, like that doesn't require you to put in the number of seats. And so when I was doing searches recently, I was seeing like three, two, zero, one, two, like just, just depends. 
And I'll just add, because it, it does look daunting with the, with the LX and the Y. So even though we know pretty much every single airline code and airport code, you're not going to, but you can click on all of these and it will tell you. So don't yeah. think you have to crack the code. Yeah. It will tell you. And when you're, when you're searching, you, you can just type in like New yeah. York. And you don't have to type in the airport code. Yeah. So don't worry about it. You can figure this out. Yeah. Um, I keep doing this. I keep telling you everything that's on the, the next slide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, and the results you're going to see, though, are for partners to book. So I'm trying to think of a good example. Like a and um, Island Upon Airways out of Japan, provides more award space for its, for its own members in a and Mileage Club than it will provide to like United or Virgin Atlantic, its partners. So what you're going to see in here is not what a and allows its own members to book, but what it allows partners to book. All right, to set an alert, you need to, there's, do I have it up here? Great, I do, okay. <laughs> so I just wanna make sure, so I'll, you'll see in the next slide. These alerts are the best thing in this entire, like pay attention. <laughs> yeah, so there's next to the seats, there's an exclamation point right over there with the red arrow going to it. You select that, if, so as you can see, there's no award space currently for two people. When you do that, this box will pop up um, you can name the alert. It helps if you're going to do that for several days or months. Um, you need to select what type of award. Generally, I mean, it'll automatically populate what you've searched. So you've got business, then you want to put in the available quantity and say, in this case, I want to do at least two. And then you can have a test email alert sent. I do it just because it's good to make sure that it's actually gone through. Um, but you just hit verify and create. And if the space shows up, expert flyer should email you and let you know. So it's a nice little tool. Um, you can also view seat maps. Oh, oh sorry. Question. Is this a free tool or like? No, no that's a good point. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, that's so it's question. like, was it like nine? Like this might have. Yeah, it is, it is ten dollars a month or ninety nine dollars a year. Yeah. Right now, um, it did just get acquired by the Point Sky, so anything could happen to it now. So they're a big company. We don't know what what's going to happen. Yeah. But right now, nine ninety nine for one. Yeah, and you can do. I think it's a three day free trial. Something like that. Five, three or five day free trial. Yeah. So you can definitely see if you get your wings on it before you pick. You could use it for a month. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, so you could, yeah. yeah. Um, it just, like for us, we know we use it a lot. Um, so we just buy it for a year, but you can definitely, yeah. if you're if you're hunting an award, go and book, like you, you're doing one big trip that year, buy one month, set all your alerts, whatever, two months, and then cancel it. And it, it does not give you a hassle about redoing it and quitting. Yeah. With the alerts, True, no. no. Yeah. No. So you'll need to have it as long as you're hunting. Yeah. 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 Um, and you get so many per month, so I have to. There's a limit, but even I ever bought it. Share between two people. I, I, I let someone use oh, it right okay. now because yeah. I use all the alerts. Cool. Yeah. It's um, for someone like me. So I, I Dave mentioned briefly that I do what are called award alerts, and I'll talk more about this. But basically, I search for a lot of award space for like two to four to six people in premium cabins, and then I send a newsletter with like specific dates and like best ways to book and your options to book and how to book and just the whole thing. And to be clear, he finds these just because he loves searching. Like he just sits there and looks for oh, yeah, more. I don't charge any money for this newsletter <laughs> right now. I don't know why I spend like 20 hours a week doing it, but. Um, Cause it's fun. It is fun. Uh, but it, I mean, it really, it, it's Some the idea is to help people who aren't work. gonna spend all this time with like finding, again, like we said, like finding business, business in first award space can be tough. It's really hard if you want like four seats. Like if you want to take the whole family, like that's where it gets, that, that's the big challenge. So my kind of goal is to make sure that like, you know, couples and friends and family can like go together on these. So anyway, that's why I use this ton. So I'm going to pay the $99 a year because I'm in here every week, multiple times. <laughs> so, um, so oh, next to like next to that blue area, you see a little seat. Uh, if you click on that, you can uh, get a seat map um, and you can see it has a nice little, uh, key chart up here so you can see what is available. And this is actually a great example with uh, Swiss. Swiss has what they call throne seats and it's these that are both paid and premium right here. Um, so like those, there's an upcharge to book them unless you have elite status. Um, you can see all the just white seats are available. The blue ones are occupied. They also block off some seats. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really useful, you can, and then over here, you can see if it's a wing seat, the light blue corresponds up there. If it were an A380 or uh, 
747, you can see if it's on an upper deck, and then the red box also indicates if it's a, uh, an exit row. So that is super helpful. Um, as I mentioned, you can create a seat alert. Oh, yeah. So if you want a specific seat that's currently unavailable, so if you see one of these blue seats and, or one of these blocked seats, and you want that, you can click uh, the create seat alert, and you can see over there, there's you can, I mean, you can include what you want. You can sp pick a specific seat. You can say any aisle seat, any window seat, any two seats together, really good if you're traveling with someone. Um, super easy. I also recommend, even if you've already booked the award, going in here and creating an aircraft alert, because if they change it on you, one that, like we talked about, it can change the seating, but they can also bump you from your seat and put you in a different class of service, which happened to me, and I found out like three days, this like let me know, but it's like, you know, three days before your flight, you find out you've been bumped from, I was on flying version Atlantic, and so I was in business, and then they moved from like a 787 to an A330, and I was, I guess it was full, and since I was an award ticket, I was like last priority, so I got bumped, and they skipped premium economy, like economy plus, and put me in the very back of the plane. Um, just no one told me from the airlines because Delta, because I booked with Delta Miles and Virgin and Delta decided not to communicate. And the only reason I knew was because I set up an aircraft swap alert. Did you get so, started? They put you on another flight. So I called Delta. Well, I called Virgin first, and they were like, "Well, we let Delta know." And I was like, "Well, that doesn't help me." Um, so I called Delta and was on the phone with somebody there for like an hour explaining to him what happened. He was like, well, we'll put you on a Delta flight. I was like, I don't want the Delta flight. I'm intentionally flying this because I want to like try it out, review it, and do this whole thing. So I was like, I just want the flight out of DC instead of New York. And he was like, well, we can't just put you on a flight. I'm like, there's a ward space I see it on your website. It's, it's right there, it says four seats available. Just go through this whole thing. Eventually, he's mad at me because <laughs> I keep pushing him. And he gives me, he like goes to a supervisor who rejects it and another one who rejects it. And then I get the supervisor on the phone and I say, I'm like looking at it on your website. And she goes, uh, and I was like, so sometimes agents will not do what they should be doing and they just don't want to deal with you. Um, just stay polite. Oh, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to add an unrelated thing here that this just reminded me of. No, no. This is, no, this is, this is something everybody should know. Um, so you know when you book an award, there is almost always a fee to cancel the award or change the award, right? It can be $200. Usually that's the most, but it can, it varies. But let's say, so Delta, it's $150 to $200 to cancel. So if you've ever booked an award and you know that you're not gonna be able to fly it, by the way, remember Delta, you can't cancel anything after 72 hours before the flight. But if you know now you need to cancel a flight six months from now, if they make a change to the flight, a substantial change, I think it's like more than an hour, you can actually call up and say, I'd actually just like to cancel it, and they will cancel it fee-free. So whenever I wind up in a situation where I book something and then I later find out that I have to cancel it, instead of immediately calling to cancel it, I just make a note of my deadline to cancel it, and I, tr from time to time, check to see if there's been a change, and if there's been a change, I can call up and cancel it for free. So. You can, you can sometimes, the hour mark is really helpful, but you can sometimes get it if it's like 30 minutes and you give them a nice it's little story about how like you won't be able to get your ride, somebody like your colleague is arriving from another airport and you'll just like, that's your ride, just you have to get reason. there early so you're rebooking your flight somewhere else, you know, you never know. It's their fault, <laughs> they changed it. Um, so just gonna touch on this quickly because I don't think this would be something you have to use a lot, uh, but maximum permitted mileage. Um, it's determined by the IATA, IATA, International Air Transport Association. It's the total distance you can fly between an origin and destination, and that uh, includes connections. Um, so you, a lot of times it's like, it'll tell you you have to cross the Atlantic or the Pacific. Sometimes you'll be allowed to cross either. Um, however, not all airlines actually stick to maximum permitted, permitted mileage, so you don't have to worry about it. Like Aeroplane doesn't really do that, which is why you can book some kind of like mini around the world tickets all within just one round trip ticket. Um, and then others will give you kind of like, I don't know, it's like breathing room, just like a, they'll let you go a little beyond or a decent bit beyond, but there's like a, there's a limit. Um, I don't think you'll run into this too much, but I do want to just kind of put that out there. Um, oops. I did it again. I did it again. Anyway, so this is, from the homepage, you can click uh, travel information, and then you'll be brought to the 
um, a page with these little tabs up here. You select max permitted mileage. You would, for airports, you put in your whole route. It's not just the origin and destination. You want to have the whole thing. Um, put in the airline you're flying, the date you're flying. Don't worry about global indicator. Run the search. And then, I know these are probably hard to see. Are we going to put this up online? Yeah. Yeah, so this will be online if you want to actually like, really look at it. So you have maximum printed mileage and calculated sector mileage. This comes first, and this, this is maximum permitted mileage. This is telling you that you have to cross the Atlantic, so it's AT. And then you have the maximum, I'm just getting in the way now. Mac, I need to set like a pointer of some kind. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Uh, maximum permitted mileage right here is 8,833 miles. 5% beyond is 9,274. 10%, 15, 20, 25. Um, that's kind of where you get into like, will an airline let you go a little beyond? Over well, yeah, I think it's like once in 15 years. Yes. It's, I mean, unless you're really trying to book those long maximizing journeys, which I doubt really anyone here is going to. But yeah, but it's, it's good to know about, but it's confusing and also you won't encounter it much. Yeah. So basically when you book the, when you have the connections and you, like you've entered in, um, so in this case I did New York to Abu Dhabi to Nairobi. Um, I think it was on Etihad. Yeah. On Etihad. Um, you have to cross the Atlantic. This is the total, was it? Permitted. permitted miles, and this is the cumulative um, through the trip. So the maximum you can get is listed here. That's also the cumulative. When you add the connection, that adds this many miles, 2135, which jumps you to 8997, which you remember the maximum was 8833. So it shows you this little, yeah, it shows you five, like 5M, which is like 5% more. So technically, like Asiana to book an FTF flight like this would not let you do it because Asiana restricts that. I've had some luck getting them to like let it happen or just not realize they are not supposed to let it happen. You just, you never know with airlines when you call in. But that's, again, this is like super advanced. <laughs> like not many people use this. So we'll talk about bank travel portals and kind of wrap up with that and do some questions. Um, so Amex, Chase, City, they all have travel portals that you can redeem points for cash tickets. Um, before you book awards, I always, especially economy awards, I, I recommend, I strongly recommend comparing the number of points you would need to use in the portal versus what you would need to transfer to an airline. When you see a cheap economy ticket to Europe, it's very often cheaper to book it, and by cheaper I mean fewer points in the portal than it is to transfer it to a partner or to, yeah, to an airline partner. Um, it also, you know, you also see like premium cabin deals that are worth booking in the portal, like New Year's Eve, Cafe Pacific released unintentionally, like first class um, flights from Vietnam to New York round trip for like $850. Um, those flights usually go for like 30 grand. So that was clearly a mistake, but if you went to the like, um, like the Chase travel portal, which is what I did, I ended up being able to book that for 58,000 chase points or something like that. And because of how those flights, uh, Cafe like earns miles in Alaska, which they've talked about before, I'll earn like 56,000 Alaska miles back. So that's a nice little rebate on using 58,000 points. Um, but again, that's a time where it really makes sense to use the portal if you're gonna use points. Cause if you're gonna book an award ticket on Cathay Pacific for that same, for just a one way, you were looking at 110,000 American miles or 70,000 Alaska miles. And I booked round trip for basically half of a one way American. So. Of course you could just use cash. Or you could just yeah. use cash, which again, but gets into your money. situation of like, do you want to spend that? I have a lot of student loans. I'm paying off those with the cash, okay? Like that's, that's how that's going. Just use points to pay us your <laughs> yeah. So that's, and then, so you have the different travel portals, but it depends on which credit card you have. Um, this is very specific to the US, obviously. Um, if you have a Sapphire Reserve, it's 1.5 cents per point. Sapphire Preferred or Inc. Preferred, it's 1.25 cents. Um, Amex Travel's a little different. It's a rebate of 35% with the Amex, the Business Platinum, which comes out to about 1.53 cents per point. Uh, the business gold is about a 25% rebate, which comes out to like 1.33 cents per point. And then and if you don't have those cards, it's just yeah, one cent. Then it's one cent, yeah. You, you need to have these cards for these rates uh, in the portal. And then city, 
uh, the prestige and premier both get 1.25 cents per point, but the prestige is dropping that benefit um, at the end of August. So, anything on portals since I know you hate using them? I mean, I don't like redeeming the portals because I like to redeem for first in business class. I did. And, and you're gonna no. you're gonna get the uh, you know that's where you're gonna get the bang for the buck. For me. Even I don't get unlimited points. I don't have a way to earn unlimited points. And so when I think about the points that I have, I want to save them for first in business class. But if that is not your goal and your goal is more travel, um, then redeeming through the portal makes a ton of sense. Just make sure that you're uh, maximizing based on which points that you have. I won't be mad. No. So that's really it for us. But we have. But not really, because we no, have no, no. Q&A time. Yeah, we've got plenty of time. We've yeah. got, um, we've got 24 minutes. 25 minutes. So, yeah. Why didn't you mention I have matrix? So, basically, oh. Google flights to me. But. Yeah, I, I mean, I use that to calculate search. Um, so, he's talking about the uh, ITA matrix. It was bought by Google, but it's. Um, I, it's Google Flights is like the dumbed down version, so you can't see all the fair code or fair classes and routing rules and I mean just pretty much everything that you could ever want from a flight. Um, but it also provides like an easy breakdown of like taxes and fees and surcharges and like you know exactly why you're paying like five dollars and sixty cents for this and twenty dollars for this. Like it it breaks everything down. It's really useful, I think, when booking awards if you want to know what the surcharges will be. It's not always accurate. Like A and A gets kind of wonky. It doesn't necessarily charge what you expect, but yeah, I mean I definitely It is a good tool. Yeah, sure. I definitely use it. I I used to use a lot more before Google Flights. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. I mean, you do because a lot of times you put your stopovers and like I'll do Shanghai, Hong Kong, LAX, and then to Dallas, which is my actual destination. Yeah. Uh, and I'll do that with stopovers for like twenty four, almost up to twenty four hours. Yeah. Yeah. And then have like this full trip, plan meetings in each city, and then be able to have it for like five hundred dollars. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you're doing like cash tickets yeah. that way, it's fantastic. And even with like. It depends on routing, like the routing rules for a particular airline. I know, I, so I have a friend uh, who has booked flights kind of just within Africa, flying around and booked intentionally like multiple 24 hour, like 23 hour and 50 minute stops so that he can like get out and go and go see everything he can for like 20 hours basically. And then come back to the airport, fly to the next place, do the exact same thing all over again, all the way to his destination. Like you can do kind of weird stuff like that. Okay. Before we continue the Q&A, because some people will filter out during the Q&A, um, I'm going to do the wrap up and oh, then yeah. we'll come back into the Q&A. Um, we are doing a little happy hour after this, like 5.15, 5.30 at BD Riley's because the last time I did one of these, people wanted to keep talking miles and points. So if you want to, we'll be there. Um, this is our contact information. You can email either of us. Uh, once again, you can find Spencer at God Save the Points or straight to the points.co. Um, and you can find me at Miles Talk. I have a Facebook group that you can join if you want to just nonstop uh, talk about Miles. <laughs> you can get a workshop certificate of completion. Um, lastly, if you have any feedback for the South by Southwest people or if you just like the session, you want more of these, make sure you do that in the app. Uh, it's really useful. Um, and I'm just going to do one little personal request. Uh, I am launching a new Miles and Points related venture next week. And if any of you guys are in the finance community or uh, other related travel community or writers, anything like that, um, your own properties, come and see me when we're all done. I'd love to tell you about it and see if there's a partner opportunity. Um, do you want to mention anything before we get back to the q and I don't have anything to Assuming you. people are going to lean no. on us now. Uh, <laughs> no. So for me, it's, Thank you for I do my writing at God Save the Points. So if you want to read, I mostly write about how to use points. Um, Additionally, I have, as you mentioned, straight to the points, straight to the points .co, not .com. That's not a typo. Um, I also have cards on the table, by the way. But it's, with straight to the points, that's the newsletter I was talking about. If you go to the site, um, you can sign up. Um, it's free, and I'm basically, like I said, I'm looking for multiple seats on flights and premium cabins. So if you're trying to book business in first with other people, hopefully I can help you with that. So. Okay, so back to the Q and A yeah, questions. <laughs> No questions. Oh, we got questions. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> way in the back. She's like, um, have you seen any negative to Delta's program where you can pay with miles and cash at the same time? Are yeah. you talking about the pay with miles feature when you have a yeah, credit card? Sure. Yeah. Or no, it's it's just miles, miles and 
Well, they've, they've got two things. Yeah, they've got two different things. One is the miles in cash. I've never seen that be a good rate. Yeah, it's, it's like one. Cent, it's one cent per per mile. So oh, okay. yeah, just so when you do that, it's like a flat rate. And I, I love that Del- Delta and I have a love hate relationship. It's a lot of hate right now. Um, I mean, they took care of my dad for like twenty years. It's great, whatever. Yeah. They they have a tendency to just like not tell you they're doing things like, oh, today the award's going to now be this. And they go, oh, we don't have an award chart. And I'm like, well, I can see the lowest rate for the entire year. That's clearly the lowest you're gonna give it. You could just like publish that. Don't like that. They also provide you with more options and that's always better, right? More options, even if they're garbage, but they market them to you. So I consider the miles and cash thing is kind of like one of those, like, look, you have more options to waste your miles. Yeah. Right, so like basically, I think in that case, just if, spend cash. I mean, I yeah. Then that case, just spend cash. I would. I, I would say, unless you, unless you have like 2,000 sky miles that you're never going to use anyway, like just yeah. get rid of them. If yeah, you I, have like 100,000 sky miles or something, like get something real out of it. Yeah, I wrote a, a post recently that was like, oh, a new way to set your sky miles on fire. Yeah. Um, because they came up with it. So now what they did was, they, and so they never, what I really don't like about Delta is that they don't give you any notice before they're going to devalued something and they devalue constantly and they never let you know ahead of time you just find out after the fact so they used to have upgrade awards which was a fixed amount of miles to upgrade a ticket and it was subject to availability of an award class and all of that but at least it was a good way to get an upgrade if you could find it uh in january ish they just got rid of that and now they will offer you in the app it says like upgrade to business using your miles and it values your miles exactly 1.1 cents each which stinks so, yeah, more options though. I mean, yeah. you, you can now upgrade every flight terribly. Um, <laughs> so. You didn't think we were gonna rant so much, did you, when you asked that? No, I wanted no. to hear the rant on that. <laughs> I was like, there's gotta be a negative to this somewhere. Yeah. When Delta yeah. does something, there usually is. Yeah, it's it's not like, <laughs> they, so yeah. in general, so I'll say this. While on the other airlines, you can still, it's easier to stock outsized value on your redemptions if you're willing to be flexible. Delta, if you're on their own metal, they've made it nearly impossible. They have tried to pin everything to the price of the ticket. Um, that's why if you're searching, say, to Australia, it'll come out at, for business class at, I think, 475,000 miles each way, and it'll be for pretty much every day. And maybe you'll get lucky and hit one, bless you, it's 130,000, um, which I'd be see, but it's yeah. really rare, and so everything is like, oh, that ticket's really expensive, so is the price of miles. And to me, the point of miles has always been to be able to not pay the outrageous price. They've just translated that now into the mileage price. So I think Delta actually provides a really good and consistent onboard experience. And so when people are like, oh, you hate Delta, and I'm like, no, I don't. I actually think they're a really well-run airline with good service, good consistent product, and the worst frequent flyer mile program. I will add that if you want to book a flight on Delta, it's more often than not better to use like Virgin Atlantic Flying Club miles to book it, or potentially uh, Flying Blue, which is, that, that kind of varies. But like Virgin Atlantic, to, like if you want to fly business class and Delta from the US to Europe, it can be, it can be like 105,000 sky miles for the one way, or it could be 50,000 Virgin Atlantic miles and Sky miles you can get from Delta's own credit cards, or the Amex co-branded credit card, or the membership rewards points, but with Virgin Atlantic, you can get them from like City, Chase, Amex, Capital One, and it's less. So you're, you've got more options to transfer, which makes it easier to acquire them, and you're paying like half well, what can points. Well, that only works if you're flying nonstop. Yes, if you're flying nonstop, of course. Lost, like Another 25, yeah. Even then it comes out less sometimes, though, now. So, but yeah, that's the, that's the big caveat with Virgin is it's gotta be nonstop, otherwise you get charged by the segment. Um, I also like them because you can call up and hold the award for 48 hours, so you can transfer after the fact, after you've held it. But see, we wound up with more hashtag frequent flyer mile arbitrage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Virgin miles for Delta. So you really don't need Delta Sky kind of miles. Yeah. Other questions? I think so, yeah. yeah. Everyone's dad used Delta. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. yeah. Might as well. Yeah. yeah. To do the upgrades, you know, not in days where you can go to a portal and click one hundred eighty dollars first class upgrade. But uh, right. Yeah, I like Delta for that reason, but I guess I don't now. Yeah. yeah. Stopovers are no longer a thing with Delta. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we used to be great with uh, American Airlines. You used to be able to have um, an open jaw. Um, stopover, so sorry, no open stopover. So you could do uh, London to New York and then have up to a year and then continue on to LA. <laughs> so, and, and because of Americans' flexibility, you could even change the date of that last segment. So you could just pick a, something with availability, book New York to LA, and then later on be like, oh, I'm going to move that to this date that I actually want to fly to LA. And it was a free ticket every time. I really loved that for the couple of years that I knew about it, and then they killed that off. So all the, you know what, the thing is, I would say what we, we're constantly chasing the sweet spots, not just in miles to book, a pro, but all the sweet spots of all the programs, what's the best way to maximize everything? And invariably what happens, especially in the blog age, is that the word gets out, the airline will at some point notice, oh, all of this X is costing us a lot of money, and then they kill it off. So I think things used to last a lot longer. When you when it was buried in a 400-page flyer talk thread, it would last for a really long time. Um, I mean, another example is the Marriott meeting yeah. thing. People used to, and it was like an open secret on flyer talk. I mean, it was a big thread forever that you could book meetings on Marriott. It would count towards your elite status, and you could do it unlimited, and you could basically have top-tier status every year just from booking meetings. You might spend $1,000 booking these little meetings, but you do it, it became so blown up that Marriott actually noticed it was denting their bottom line in terms of how many elites were not really earning it, and now you're limited to 10 nights a year. So that, you know, without the way things spread now, that might have never changed, yeah. but it has. And everything will. So what, you know, we, we use, uh, I mean, uh, my phrase is earn and burn. I'm not the only one that uses it. It's don't, don't just hoard everything because the game's gonna change on you. And so if you just hoard it, like you can't, and this is another thing I love to tell people that are, that are you know, trying to save up for things is try and earn fast, but try and spend fast. Because unlike a bank account, your, your frequent flying miles will always be worth less a couple of years later than they are now, always. I mean, I've never seen them become worth more. So unlike a bank account for retirement where you're saving, and it, I mean, something that's, 50,000 miles now might be 100,000 miles next year, might be a million miles by the time you retire. I'm, that's not even kidding with Delta. I mean, it really, yeah. like it's a million miles for a round trip to Australian business. So, um, so keep that in mind and have a good time and spend the miles. And you know what? We'll figure out a new way to get miles and spend them later on. Question? Yep. So if you are using points for like, a, like an aspirational first class ticket. Yeah, the best way. Good. Which yeah. airline? Like which, oh, which is ooh. the first we should shoot for? Well, <laughs> I mean, well, there's one several that are the experience. Yeah, it depends. I mean, it's like lounges to consider and whether or not they'll drive you to the plane. <laughs> yeah, I, no, no, you're right. I mean, I, I'll give you just, I mean, we can each give you a few, but like um, the only two that have the shower on board first class are Everett's and Etihad. So Etihad for probably another few weeks, we hear. You can book with America Miles. They, the partnership is rumored to be ending possibly roughly soon. Um, the Lufthansa First Class Award, which they'll only give to partners about two weeks out, but if you're flexible, um, coming from Frankfurt to the US, you could have a long connection and still do this, or you could just originate in Frankfurt. They have their own first class terminal oh. that is just for their international first class passengers, and I think they're top tier. Uh, the honors. Senators and, no, not Senators, Honors Circle. Yeah, but it's a really, it's that's like 600,000 qualifying miles over the course yeah, of two insane. years or something, something, or something crazy. But if you're on the first class award, you can do that. If you've ever seen the Lufthansa first class duck, that's where people get them. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a rubber duck because they have bathtubs. So yeah, you yeah, you can you can literally take a bath. You can also just ask for. A but they have a and they have a Iberico ham that's like. They have the yeah, Iberico expensive. ham that's like the most expensive yeah. ham in the world. I was like gorging on it. Yeah. Um, some of the alcohol they report me. He's like, this is eight hundred dollars a bottle. <laughs> it's like, they have okay. A they have a champagne list, a cigar bar. They can do a rum yep. tasting. They have a massive bar. It's insane. I was um, there in the morning, so I had to go like. <laughs> yeah. But so that's like in terms of I think that's the best ground experience and then they do drive in the plane in like a Porsche or uh, it depends what's available right at that moment. It's really cool to show up at like a 747 like on the ground 
Yeah. Like, it's just like really bad. Yeah, like you get that it's big, and then you stand next to it, and you're like, oh, all right. yeah, <laughs> like totally. Um, Japan Airlines first class, I thought was absolutely phenomenal. They gave the the top grade Kobe steak on board. They had what is the champagne they. They moved. They, they used to have Salon. The, now it's yeah. Crystal. Okay. I have the Salon. But it's like really I don't expensive. actually know a lot they about that. They had a $100 bottle of tea. Yeah. $100 bottle of tea. It was delicious. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's a range. You don't have yeah. to pick one. If you're, if you're traveling as a couple and you can somehow magically find Singapore suites for two people, um, yeah. that's one because it's got like a double bed kind of set, set up. So if you have a middle section, you can like have everything uh, laid out as like basically one bed. Um, the newer suites, it's a different cabin setup, but same kind of thing. You can still have uh, a double bed. So I thought. Yeah, that's and the Q suites. Q suites. Qatar has yeah. two together. Yeah, there's just so many. I yeah, mean, there's a lot. I haven't flown all of them, and I'm just like looking forward to it one day. Yeah, so. but if you hang out online with us, we'll. Uh, yeah. We'll keep. <laughs> Inevitably, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, think everybody has their favorite though, and it's always like I think customer service has a lot to do with it. Like you just have a really good experience with a particular crew. Like I, I flew Qantas first class from uh, Dallas to Sydney and probably the best flight attendant I've ever had in my life. Like he was just, it was just amazing how engaging and friendly he was, but just, but also good at what he was doing. And if anybody who's ever worked in like a customer facing role, like you just really appreciate when someone like is just on top of it constantly. And he happened to know another flight attendant that I had flown with before. So I thought that was funny from like another airline. That's how much I guess I'm flying these days. Yeah. I also had a fantastic service experience yeah. with the Yeah. Do you both do this full time or like on the side? Good point. Both? But, yeah. Um, I mean, we both I, do it full time and on the side. Yeah, so I, I do this full time. I write at God Save the Points almost daily. My articles are usually like, my, my uh, partner over there, his name's Gilbert Ott, he writes a lot of like fair deal pieces. He's based in the UK, and so he does a lot of Euro, Eurocentric stuff. But he writes about like fair deals and new stuff, and I write a lot about like how to use the points, and those articles tend to be like 2,000 words, and so I write like one piece a day while he writes like multiple shorter pieces a day. Um, yeah, and then I have this like newsletter that I just like guess do because I have no time, so I should do more. Um, and then there's a website called 10X Travel that I work with, also has a Facebook group um, that I guess we've built from like, I guess when I joined it was like 1,000 people, and now it's like, almost 30,000, um, so I spend a lot of time trying to figure out ways to keep that community going. So I'm just in this way too much, cool. way, way too much. Yeah, I also, I, I'm basically 24 seven. I've sometimes woken up to like alerts from the group in the middle of the night, be like, oh, I gotta answer them. Like, that's yeah. what they need to do right now. I so, dreamed about a, a hotel evaluation the other night. Like oof. that's like, brutal. wasn't real, Cold but sweats. I just like, I was like, I woke up and I was like, that actually happened? I also, Fair, I had, yeah. No, I was thinking about Hyatt, which like really scared me. Um, <laughs> but I was, uh, I, I had surgery about a month ago, and I still remember like coming out of the haze of like being under. And I was like, in my head, I like woke up and I was like, in an airport and trying to figure out where I was supposed to go. And I was like, and I like once I'd kind of fully come to it, I was like, you have got a problem. <laughs> just, just stop. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Anything about sleep lag device? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Everything. You know. Your thoughts. I think if you do it occasionally, you're not going to get in any trouble. I think if you do it all the time, you will. I Does think everyone know skip lag first? Yeah. No. Nope. Oh. Okay. You want to explain? So dropping a last slow. If you, I actually did this to get to Chicago once. So I booked um, DC, connecting in Chicago on the way to Lansing, Michigan, just because that was the cheapest thing I could find, and I just got off in Chicago. Um, the downside is if there's like weather over Chicago and they're like, we're going to reroute you through another city, you're screwed. Like <laughs> you can't be like, oh, but I was going to get off in Chicago. Like, you can't you know, have any bags either. You can't check bags either because yeah. that's going to go to your final there, destination. There used to be a Unless, thing called short checking. They really won't allow that anymore. If, if the connection yeah. is long enough, like you have a super long connection. If you, yeah, you need a really long connection. Yeah, you can but if you, if you have like even like a four hour connection or something, yeah. they won't. It's best to just be careful. Yeah, yeah, international. Coming into but, the U.S. and yeah. you're going to get your bag anyway. Yeah, it's right. It's but you got to really think about it. 
It used to be you could just say, I'd like to short check the bag, I want to get stuff out when I get there, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But because of skip lag and the popularity, they're onto it. Yeah. And so the airline your sued, the airline really sued skiplag.com and lost. Um, there's and another then, going on now. Well, right? and doing it personally. No, Luth yeah. Lufthansa is now Lufthansa is suing a travel a guy who did this. Yeah. I don't know if they'll yeah. win that, but so there was like an example, like uh, Alaska started flying to um, uh, Portland from Austin, right? So United was bought selling tickets from Austin to San Francisco to Portland to compete with Alaska, and they dropped the prices. I flew to San Francisco. I didn't take the flight to Portland. But the flight to San Francisco was several hundred dollars more expensive than the flight coming in through San Francisco on the way to Portland. So I just took my carry on, walked off the plane, and then went to Napa. And, <laughs> yeah. and drank a lot of wine. You didn't tell them like you were sick or No, you don't have to do it. No, yeah, you don't say just, just, just canceled last night. No, 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 just so they think that can no, sickness. No, just yeah. Yeah. get on. I also don't really don't add your frequent flyer That's account right. if you care about it. No, seriously. Or you can add a partner. I mean, but like Yeah, but don't put your frequent flyer number for that airline if you're gonna do that so because it's just letting them easily track yeah. that's more of the cash fair stuff but yeah that's yeah that's, awesome. that's a great question though because yeah. it's, it's been in the news a lot yeah lately with the Lufthansa passenger getting sued yeah and uh, I just saw like yesterday a new United suit now oh, again right. skip flag itself oh they're yeah. trying again that's yeah nice. so hey you know it's one of those things I personally think that airlines should not be allowed to do what they're doing um, if they're willing to sell it then you should be able to do what you want but yeah they claim that's their business practice. So. They're actually suing the airlines in Europe now. Yeah, Iberia, yeah. Is, yeah. Iberia lost a case to a passenger who basically yep. was saying, I shouldn't have to. So when you book a flight and it's got a connection, you have to get on the first flight if you want the second one. Um, they canceled the guy the and I, yeah, they canceled the whole ticket. This guy in Spain was like, no, I should be able to get on where I won. I paid for this, like I should be able to get on this, at the next city. And he won the suit, but I'm not really sure how it's going to, I think it's getting appealed and I'm not really sure how it'll play out. But, but also on a larger scale, they have these um, consumer organizations, a central one in Europe. Oh yeah. They have all these subdivisions in every country and every country, so airplanes get under being sued now and other. Oh wow, I didn't that's know. Gr that's great. Yeah. I think. It'll be very interesting. I think the consumers are on the right side of that one. <laughs> cool, anything else? Anything Wanna go to bar and drink? Anything travel. <laughs> Okay, perfect timing, guys. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs> yes, thank you. Hi. Hi. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, let me just turn this off.